Good morning and welcome to the worship for the sixth Sunday of Pentecost with St. Brendan's Episcopal Church in Juneau, Alaska. I'm the Reverend Carolyn Malsey, I'm the priest in charge here, and with me are Stephanie Hall, who is our pianist and reader, Stephanie McDermott, who is our violist and reader and soloist, and Jim Hale, who is recording us. Our opening hymn is One Bread, One Body. Delight in your will, 
and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Benighty. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm for today is Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112. Let's read it responsibly by whole verse. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. <coughs> The first reading is from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan Aram, sister of Laban and Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, if it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time came to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, First, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. 
And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, I really like this season of ordinary time because it gives me an opportunity to renew my series, which I call Fractured Parables. As a lot of you knew, know, I grew up in farm country in upstate New York. Farmers would have questions about this sower's methodology. They wouldn't take good seed and throw it just anywhere. No, before they seed the corn or the wheat in the spring, they prepare the field. Springtime in New York means the smell of manure spread over fields to enrich the, the earth, a fragrant offering, if you will. Only after the soil has been fertilized does the seed spread. It makes for good, healthy, abundant harvests. But this story isn't really about farming. And like every parable, although Matthew applies it to how listeners hear the word of the kingdom of God, it can be used to understand a variety of situations, a multitude of messages. The story is about efforts to convert the human heart. It's about a seemingly profligate, even wasteful sower, about seed that is randomly tossed and either nurturing or poor situations. No bloom where you are planted posters here. And it's about the soil, or how ready individuals or groups are to hear, receive, and act on a message. Although we Christians are quick to assume that Jesus is the protagonist, the sower. That's not necessarily so. When I was newly ordained, I was sent out on a hospital call to a very old gentleman. I kind of dreaded it as it seemed like a dull assignment and it was very clear that the rector didn't want to go. But it turned out this was an interesting guy. He was a sower. In his youth, he was employed by an electrical company. And he was sent out to the counties around Rochester to convince landowners to electrify their farms. It's hard to imagine that just one and a half or two lifetimes ago, most farming was done by hard manual labor without the assistance of electrical machines. But that's the case. This man, I'll call him Joe, went out to talk to farmers about this newfangled thing called electricity. 
and how it could make life in their homes and work on their farms easier. Some of the seed that he sowed fell on the paths. People wouldn't even talk to him. The flyers he left on their doors ended up as kindling in the wood stove. Some of his potential clients were rocky ground. They listened to him, but they didn't get it. Or it seemed fantastical or too expensive. Farmers are notoriously fiscally conservative. Some of the target audience were thorny. First of all, they believed that God intended working the earth to be hard. It's right there in Genesis. Or their wife's cousin's neighbor had gotten the gall darn contraption, but the first thunderstorm and the whole thing broke down. But some of the customers were good soil. He sat in their living rooms and they gave him cake and coffee and he brought out his charts and diagrams and they listened and they talked. And ultimately, the houses were electrified and the wives, this was the 1930s and 40s, the wives had electric stoves instead of having to haul wood for the kitchen and electric washing machines rather than having to scrub clothes on a galvanized metal basin. You can still find those basins around in antique shops. And out in the barn, the cows were being milked by electrical milking systems and the milk was kept cold in big chilled tanks so it didn't go sour so fast. You can guess which customers increased their profits by a hundredfold, or 60 or 30. The sower doesn't have to be a person. It can be a movement, a collection of voices urging us to recognize situations of society that devastate human lives and divide us. The current movement for racial justice is a sower in our world. The voices in this movement sow seeds of a call for repentance and reconciliation. For us to recognize that whole groups of persons in our nation, blacks, Latin Latinx, and Native Americans in particular, are shut out from opportunities for economic educational or social equity. Some of the seed that is thrown out falls on the paths. Those listeners aren't even noticing what is going on. Some falls on rocky ground. Listeners get the idea, but they are distracted or too busy to do anything, or they try something once and fail and never try again. Some of the listeners dwell in the thorns. They refuse to listen or blame the disadvantaged for their struggles, citing laziness or even inferior genetics. Then there is the good soil, the folks who have compassion and a will to change, who examine their own preconceptions and who join in the call to make society more just more equitable, more human. The sower isn't even necessarily a human being. For example, environmentalists could claim that the sower is the earth itself, the seed being the earth's response to human abuse of the environment. The earth is sending out loud and multiple messages through increasingly hot and dry summers, increasingly violent hurricanes, and the death of bees and other creatures. And those messages tell us the human behavior has to change. Some of the soil, the human listeners who receive these messages, are a path who don't recognize the messages at all. Some listeners are rocky ground. They hear the message but feel it doesn't apply to them or it's somebody else's problem. 
Some of the messages fall among thorns. The listeners in this group find arguments to deny the message that our behavior causes climate change. They tell us that the climate is always changing. It goes through cycles. They disregard the current rate of carbon in the atmosphere that is higher than any time in the Earth's history. The message gets choked out. But some of the seed falls on receptive, prepared soil. These are the folks who have studied the science and recognize their own responsibility in the matter. These are the folks who put solar panels on their houses and buy electric cars. These are the pe people and corporations who divest from industries that contribute to the problem. These are the folks whose behaviors change and who find solutions in greater or lesser degrees, some a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30. I think we all have sowers in our lives, people or movements or things or even God, casting seeds on us, offering us options to become better people, holier, lovelier, kinder, or not. We are all sowers, too, choosing what kind of seed to cast, good or bad, and finding that our seed sometimes flies away ungerminated, and other times takes root and grows a hundredfold. What Jesus offers us in this story, in his parable, is not a story with one simple explanation, as Matthew assumes in his interpretation after the parable itself, but a way to understand who we are, what forces act in our lives, what we might become. The possibilities are infinite as broad and encompassing as God is in our lives and in our world. The story calls us to consider what seed we cast out, what seed we are, what kind of earth we are to receive the seed sent our way. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you 
and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, in your time on earth you healed the sick and taught your disciples to do so also. We ask that you bless those who are sick among us and enable us to find ways to heal them. Protect those who care for the sick without concern for their own well-being. Bring those who have died into your heavenly mansions. Comfort the loved ones of those who have died and give them strength to move on in the hard days ahead. In your ministry, you taught us to reach out to those who are poor, to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. Guide us to help those who have lost their incomes, those who struggle to support their families, and those whose losses bring them emotional, physical, and spiritual distress. Help us to offer hope and assistance to all who suffer in this difficult time. Lord Jesus, help us to respond to one another in love, without blame or judgment. Replace our fear with courage and strength. Be present with those who are isolated and give them faith. Help us to remember that our only true health and well-being is in you, our Savior, and our eternal friend. Amen. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Today's offertory is brought to us by the two Stephanies. Today's loose offering will go to the Glory Hall. If you would like to send in an offering to St. Brendan's, uh, please send it to us at 4207 Menden Hall, Luke Road, Juneau, Alaska, 99801.
prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, Caroline, our priest in charge, Michael, our deacon, and Mark, our archdeacon. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for President Trump, Governor Dunleavy, the Congress, the state legislature, and the Supreme Court. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for Alex's family, Margaret, Ashu, Yurus, Debbie, Aaron and Devon, Dwayne, Constance, Dave, Nicole, Marsha, Colleen, Pat, Vanda, Faith, Holly, Troy, Debbie, Cheryl, David, John, Lori, Mariah, Paul, Carl, Sherry A., Jane, Jerry, Mary Rose, Don A., Tricia, Jackie, Jordan, Jeremy, Scott, Rebecca, Olivia, Ann, Julie, Jeannie, Jonathan. For all those on the front lines dealing with the coronavirus and all those suffering from it, the victims of domestic violence, all who live and work at the Johnson Youth Center and Juno Youth Services homes, all who live with addictions and those who love and care for them, all around the world who suffer from AIDS or Alzheimer's, and for those who look for a cure. Give to the departed eternal rest, and let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In thanksgiving, we pray for our church family, especially Janet Adams and family, and for Provincia in India. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially Dee. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, Help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Our closing hymn is the Prayer of St. Francis.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. <laughs>